Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at the Filson Dryden backpack, which is a 26 liter all purpose bag. And after having a chance to test out backpacks from companies such as Waterfield Designs and Nutsack, I was very excited to have a chance to take a look at something from Filson as they seem to be in a similar category of having just, you know, heritage style bags that are very well built. And so the Dryden backpack was the one from Filson's line that really stood out to me the most and I've been testing it out for the past couple of weeks and so far it's been a pretty good experience. The bag has a solid build quality. I really like its overall aesthetic. It offers an impressive amount of space. I was however expecting a little bit more, especially given the higher price point that this bag has. So I'm excited to walk through all the details with you guys. And with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, I really like the overall aesthetic. This definitely has a little bit more of a rustic or heritage style vibe. The shape and layout of the bag reminded me a little bit of Jansport and Swiss gear backpacks that I've used in the past, but I like that the outdoorsy vibe that it has makes it feel a little bit more adult or professional so it could still work well in an office setting while being rugged enough to take into the outdoors or for walking around the city. And then as far as the colors, the version that I have here is the otter green, but it comes in a dark navy and in a tan color. And then moving into the materials, on the exterior, the bag is made out of a 1000D Cordura nylon that feels pretty rugged and also not very heavy. One thing about this, however, is that it didn't feel quite as durable or you know robust as some of the fabrics that we've seen on bags such as the GoRook GR1 or even something like the Recycled Firefighter 24-Hour Backpack. Those also had a 1000D Cordura fabric, but it just felt a little bit thicker and heavier. So. So far, I haven't noticed any issues with this. It still feels really durable, but just something that I wanted to call out, especially given the higher price point of this bag. And then also as part of the materials, you have some great YKK zippers all throughout. And then you have some leather accents on the zipper pull and on the top handle. And while we're on the top handle, I did want to call out that it does come up a nice amount, so it's pretty easy to grab, but it's fairly thin and it doesn't have a lot of padding. So if you pack the bag out and you hold it for a longer period of time, I did notice that it can tend to dig into your fingers a little bit. Continuing along the outside of the bag, I was happy to see that you have two external water bottle pockets, one on each side, and they offer a pretty decent amount of space. Currently what I have in here is the 20 ounce water bottle that you've seen in a lot of my other videos, and that fit in there pretty comfortably. One thing about these pockets, however, is that they don't have a whole lot of elasticity, so the volume you get here is pretty fixed, and I also didn't really like that when you place something a little bit thicker, it tends to take up space from the main area of the bag. And then moving into the capacity, the bag comes in at about 26 liters, which is a really versatile size in my opinion. I was easily able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me and I still had leftover space for larger items such as a lunchbox or a change of clothes. One thing that I did want to call out about this bag, however, is that it's not very slim. So once you start to pack it out, it does tend to stick out a little bit, but it's still not so much that you wouldn't be able to navigate crowded areas or jump onto public transit. Taking a look at these straps and the back paneling, so far the bag has been really comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here. They have a nice amount of padding. It's pretty thick and soft right out of the box. And then on the inside, you have this meshy material to help prevent moisture from building up. And the straps also have a very nice width to help prevent them from digging into your shoulders when the bag is a little bit more packed out. One note on the shoulder straps here is that there is no sternum strap included with the bag, but you do have these little leather loops that might be good for attaching something with a carabiner. Moving into the back paneling, this has also been pretty comfortable. There is some padding here. However, I wish it had been as robust as the padding that we saw on the straps. You can see there's also no meshy material to help prevent moisture from building up. And although there is these small air channels here along the back, I do wish that a lot more elevation had been provided to create some more ventilation because while I was wearing this, I did notice that my back would tend to get pretty sweaty. One last note that I'll call out while we're on the back panel is that you do have this nice luggage passer that's going to allow you to rest this on a suitcase while traveling to save some weight on your back. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag has a decent amount of pocketing all throughout. I wasn't crazy about the layout, however, I don't know if it just didn't quite match up with the way that I normally like to pack. And I also felt that for the size of the bag, there could have been maybe a few more pockets included or they could have just been organized a little bit differently. Again, that's just my personal preference. And so jumping in on the front, you have a quick access pocket near the bottom. It has a zipper that opens up nice and wide so you can get a good view into everything that's in this pocket. And I do like that this compartment has some volume so you can toss in bulkier accessories when needed. And so pretty simple layout here. Jumping in, I currently just have my Ray-Ban sunglasses with their case. And then I also 
also tossed in my GoPro Hero 3 Plus, and then I threw in my Blue Pot portable Bluetooth speaker and power bank. And then along the back of this compartment, you have a few additional organizational options. So on the front here, you have some small slots that are gonna be great for something like a stylus or a pen, which is what I currently have here. And then on the back of that, you have a larger slip pocket that's gonna be great for anything a little bit bigger that you wanna store. What I currently tossed in here was just a lightning cable and power brick to charge my phone and my tablet. And then in this pocket, you also have a little lanyard with a plastic clip that's gonna be a great spot to store something like your keys or a multi-tool. And then moving up along the front of the bag, you have another quick access pocket. And I like that this one has a flap that comes over the zipper as these are a little bit more exposed. They don't have any sort of aqua guard or even reverse coil. So I like that this one kind of has that extra bit of protection from the flap opening this up. This is a pretty deep compartment. It actually goes down all the way to the bottom of the bag. So because it was so tall, this might be a great spot to store something like some folders or a thin book or a magazine. I was a little bit unsure how to use this. So what I tossed in here was something like my Kindle e-reader. I also threw in a full-size moleskin notebook. And then the last item that I tossed in here is my Matador uh, packable blanket that I like to have with me for when I'm eating outside. The next area that we're gonna take a look at is the laptop compartment. And I really like how wide this compartment opens. The zippers go all the way down. It's a separate compartment and I like that it has these gussets on the side. So it's not a TSA style laptop pocket, but I actually prefer this as you can open up wide and grab whatever you need from this area and you don't have to worry about the flap opening up. And so you have two separate sleeves in this area on the front. This one's not that padded. It's just a very simple slip pocket that might be a good spot to place something like your tablet. Currently what I have in here is my iPad mini, but it definitely gets swallowed up by this pocket. You could put a full size 10 or 11 inch tablet or maybe some folders or papers. And then in the middle, you do have some space if you wanted to toss in something thinner, again, like some papers or a folder, but I chose to leave that empty so that I didn't create any bulging against my laptop. And then moving on to the laptop sleeve itself, it has this nice Velcro strap to help keep your device in place. And then you have a padded sleeve. This one is a little bit thicker than the one on the front, so it offers a decent amount of protection. One thing that I noticed about this compartment is that it's not really suspended off the bottom of the ground. It does have some padding, but I do wish that it had been pulled up a little bit. And so as far as the sizing, currently what I have in here is a 13 inch MacBook Pro, but you could definitely store up to a 16 inch laptop if needed. And so pulling my device out, now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. And I like that the compartment comes up a decent amount. So if you happen to have a thicker device, it should be able to fit in here okay. There's no sort of fleece lining on the inside, which would have been nice to see. And again, I do wish that it had been pulled up a little bit more, but it still feels like my device is gonna be pretty well protected while I'm running around throughout the day. The last area that we're gonna take a look at is the main compartment. And so this is a top loading bag, but I like this panel style opening as it gives you a lot of visibility into the main compartment. And at 26 liters of volume, this is a ton of space for anything that you might wanna carry with you. As you can see here, even with the items that I normally pack for my EDC, I had plenty of leftover space at the top if I wanted to toss in a jacket or a lunchbox. And so diving into the items that I currently have here, first up, I have a new tech pouch from Wandered, which I'm gonna be doing a video on in the future. This has been really great to use, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss when that video comes out. And then going down towards the bottom, I tossed in my Beats Studio wireless headphones. I also have my DJI Mavic Mini with its case. And then I tossed in my Levitate portable standing desk, which fits in there very easily. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. And so a very simple layout here, and I love how much this comes up. This is what makes it great for holding bulkier items. And it's also gonna allow this to work very well as a minimal travel bag. So I was easily able to toss in my larger double-sided packing cube, a dot kit, an extra pair of shoes, and then I could definitely use this for a longer weekend trip. And then as far as organizational options in this main area, there's not a whole bunch. You just have one mesh zippered pocket here on the back and this lays pretty flat. It does have some volume, but I wouldn't put anything too bulky in here just to not create any bulging for anything that I place in here. I like to keep everything pretty flat. So the only thing that I tossed in here is just a little wireless charger with its cable that I like to have with me, particularly if I'm staying at a hotel You can just place this at a nightstand. So that's the only thing I have in there, but still a nice amount of space. And if you don't want to use it, just kind of stays out of the way. So really love the simple layout and space offered in this main compartment and throughout the rest of the bag. Can really hold a ton of stuff. 
I like the aesthetic that it has. And if you're looking for a durable and spacious everyday bag that can also work for minimal travel, then this is gonna be a good option to take a look at. And so to wrap up, it's been a pretty good experience testing out the Filson Dryden backpack over the past couple of weeks. It's been very comfortable to wear. It has a great build quality. I really like its overall aesthetic and it offers an impressive amount of space. And so you can currently purchase this on sites such as Huckberry or Amazon and also on Filson's official site for about $225 to $230, which to me feels a little bit expensive for the features and build quality that the bag has to offer. It is very well built and it overall feels like something that's gonna be with you for a long time to come, but there's just a lot of other great bags at this price point that are definitely gonna be worth considering. And so as I was testing this out, one of the first bags that this made me think of was the Evergood CPL28, which we looked at really recently. That comes in at a pretty similar price range and it just feels a little bit more ruggedly built. I love the organizational layout on that. It's gonna offer a little bit more space and flexibility due to its clamshell style opening. And it's gonna be a bag that you can take pretty much anywhere. So if you're looking for something that's gonna be rugged and offer a more of a minimalistic aesthetic, then that's gonna be a great option to keep in mind. Another bag this made me think of is the Fjall Raven Raven 28, which has a little bit more of an outdoorsy vibe, similar to this one here. It has plenty of organizational options. It comes in at a similar capacity at about 28 liters, and that bag is gonna come in at around $100, $120, so a little bit more affordable, but still offers a great build quality. And if you're looking for something with this sort of a vibe, then that's gonna be one of the best options to check out. Another bag this made me think of is the Air Tech Pack 2, which is a really great, Kind of all-purpose bag similar to this one it's going to have a much more modern and minimal aesthetic i really love the weather resistance that that bag offers it's very comfortable to wear it has a solid ballistic nylon exterior ykk zippers it has a ton of great organizational options and protection for all of your tech so if you're looking for something in this price range it's going to work a little bit better with a more professional outfit then that's going to be a great option to keep in mind and then the last option that I'll mention here is the Waterfield Designs Bolt Backpack, which is a very solidly built bag. It's made in the US and that's gonna come in at a little bit of a higher price point at over $300, but that is really to me what a premium bag should feel like. It has a very rugged wax canvas exterior, leather accenting, it all just feels very well built. It has YKK zippers, it's very comfortable, it has a nice organizational layout. And if you're looking for a bag that's gonna have this sort of an aesthetic, you know, a little bit more heritage style vibe, but that's gonna feel more rugged and premium, then that's gonna be one of the best options to check out. With that being said, the Filson Dryden holds up pretty well against all those bags, and if you don't mind the higher price point or you're a big fan of Filson's products and you're looking for something that's gonna have a nice aesthetic and plenty of space, then this is still gonna be a good option to consider. And I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys think of the Filson Dryden backpack and how it compares to some of the other great work and everyday bags that we featured on the channel. And if there are any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank you as always for watching and supporting the channel. And if you found this video helpful, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.